What's up guys, it's Flamon from Flamon Miniatures and today I have for you a video tutorial about painting the helmet of my Sterling Warrior. Uh, on this, this is the first video about painting this helmet because as it turned out I needed more time than I expected for painting it. So today I will present to you how to paint the, the sketch of colors on the helmet and in two days, on Friday, I will upload a video tutorial about creating smooth blendings from them that is creating all the illusion of metallic material that is used for the helmet. So the first step for me is painting the entire helmet with the mixture of ochre brown, ochre brown and black. And well, because we need to have a color base for it. So I'm using this mixture because it gives a dark greenish uh, color to it. And the armor of Eastering Warrior is yellow, but it's not gold. I'm using gold in my description because most of people are calling every kind of yellow NMM gold. But let's face it, this is a regular soldier. They would never have golden armors. And we can see on the pictures and on the movie that this is really not not gold. This is just yellow armor. So I would say that it is brass. So I'm today I'm trying to achieve something that looks more or less like brass which is a bit paler than gold. Gold has warmer and more yellowish tones to it. Brass is very similar, but a bit different. So after I painted the entire helmet with, with this mixture of ochre brown and black, now I'm painting reflections with silver gray on its surface. You can use also white paint or any other kind of um, very bright yellowish color. Uh, in this step, what is most important is that I'm right now sketching the, the reflections on the helmet. And I like to do that on the beginning because thanks to that I'm later not... It allows me not to fall into this uh, weird situation where your NMM looks like gradient made in Photoshop or, or like a plastic, something like this, because on the metal you need to have sudden reflection of light and strong contrast. This makes it look like metal. So I'm um, right now placing the silver gray in places where I want mm, the light to shine the most. And I'm, there are two ways how I'm deciding where to put these reflections. One is when I simply hold the miniature in my hand below, under, under a desk lamp and then I look where the light reflects on it and I, then I try to uh, make the position of the lamp and the miniature that would be most natural and I try to copy like, like here you can see I'm trying to copy reflection that naturally appear on the miniature so it's a lot about looking on the miniature I look where the light reflects because then I have uh, not one reflection, but I can see how the light works on all the details, like on these things that are coming from his head. This this one, you can see that there are real reflections that are appearing from the desk lamp. And another thing that you can do and I'm doing when I'm making some miniature that is really important for me, then I'm uh, making a photos of my miniature in an environment which I will later use for making the final photos. So a background and illum illuminate it with my desk lamps uh, in a position that looks natural. Then I take photos of it and later I simply try to recreate uh, these reflections that I can see on the photos on the miniature. So these are these two ways how you can work, creating realistic reflections. And you can, of course, forget about it and just uh, place the reflections in in more classical way, just in concave, uh, a convex element and make concave darker. That would be more classical approach. But I prefer the first two because then I'm not losing feeling where to paint what. And here you can see two different paints that are not perfectly presented on the color chart. 
So this is now yellow oak, and mm, and the darker one is ochre brown. And yeah, I'm using these colors purposely because they will look mm, yellow oak will look more pale on this armor, and this will be make it closer to brass. So as you can see now, I'm painting layers around the reflections because thanks to that I will be able to keep sudden creating sudden reflection it's when light reflects on polished metal it reflects really sudden there is no transition like on gradient so I try to keep it keep it like that and right now I'm just painting layers with different tonations and thanks to that I will have a um, progressive color tran transition, uh, color progression from the base color to the reflection, but I have better control over it uh, because I'm working with uh, stronger layers that you can see in places like pixel art, pixel art. So yeah, it's, it's sketching. Right now, I'm just creating a sketch. And yeah, so it's time for yellow ochre. And yeah, this is a much... So yeah, right now, as you can see, I'm creating progressive color transitions going from the brightest color to the darkest. This is the second color that I'm using uh, because they are on the helmet also places like this which are bright, but are not reflecting the light di directly. Uh, and this is a great occasion to create reflection that is darker and have more control because they are bright, but not reflecting the direct sun ray, so they can have more color inside of them, they can be darker. And now I'm painting edge of the helmet with yellow. Yep, so I will do it everywhere. So yet, yeah, my plan was to make a one video, but then during the pr painting process, uh, as it turned out, there are so many angles on this on this helmet and so many details that I actually have to split it in two if I want to keep these videos uh, short, like 20 minutes long. Uh, because I can see that mm, most definitely people prefer this version like so the second part will appear on Friday so you won't have to wait long for it and now you can also comfortably uh, look for sketching or blending so today is the sketching moment yeah there is uh, a lot of doing the same thing so right now I'm painting, like I said, places that are bright but are not reflecting the light directly. And of course most of this what I do is happening in the way that it's uh, happening because I have experience, years of experience in working with, with, with this technique, placing the reflections in the right places so I know where I should place the brightest reflections. Like for example, I'm usually trying to paint my miniatures like if the source of light, the sun, would be up front and above, not straight above. So the brightest reflections won't appear on the top of the miniature. Sometimes they will, but most of them won't. They will appear um, in this frontal area and on the edges and that's what I'm presenting right now okay and ochre brown ochre brown which is a very nice color that is a bit darker than yellow ochre but has more richness to its color as you can see it's a bit darker but it's also more saturated and more brown while yellow ochre is rather pale
So right now I'm creating just another layer of color. Uh, of course I'm trying to make it thin. But as you can see with every new color, I have more and more yellow colors on the model. If I would be painting uh, gold, I would... Of course there are also um, different styles of gold. You can have cold gold, you can have warmer gold. And, and right now I think I would rather use warmer colors for it. Mm, but like I said, this is this is rather brass than gold. So yep, it's a, a layer of color with ochre brown. So the speed that you can see here is uh, three times quicker than how I was painting it with in reality. But I think that you can clearly see everything that I do. So. I will keep it like this, especially that at this step when I'm painting the sketch, movements of my brush are not that important. And yeah, because many of people are asking me this, then I'm using a paintbrush from Windsor Newton Series 7 size 2 and avoid miniature series, which is really bad for, in my opinion, or at least it doesn't work well with miniatures. At least it didn't work well for me. Maybe they, maybe they are good for something else. But I'm not using it, so it's it's a regular series. And the paint on the tip of my brush look always fresh because I constantly clean my brush. It's like I paint with it. If I see that the consistency starts to dry, I, I simply quick uh, quickly clean my brush, applying fresh paint and work with new fresh paint. Okay, so now I'm I'm making a color mixture where idea is that I'm trying to add very small amount of black paint to ochre brown. Uh, ochre brown easily changes into green, this weird kind of green, like a bit rotten. And so yeah, I, I named it like 5%. The idea is that just enough to make this ochre brown a little bit darker and a little bit green. So it would be like 5% but you, you know I'm adding it uh, just trying to have this uh, color effect. So just to just add a very small amount and see if this got a bit darker and more green and it's better to add black um, little by little and then see if it works in the way how you intended it to work. And yeah, this is a very important color because it's uh, the main color between very dark base color and the uh, ochre brown, which gives uh, this whole warm yellowish orange tonation. And it will be good also as a color for places where, like here, where we have some kind of reflection of light, but it's supposed to be dark at the same time. Because even in shaded areas, you have, when you're painting something that is metallic, you have reflection of light. Uh, it's just light that bounces from other objects, but they are not completely dark. Because everything reflects light, just in different, with different strength. And here you can see top edge of this weird antenna on his head. And yeah, it gets darker too, because uh, where I placed uh, a reflection in here, uh, naturally on the top of the helmet, helmet would be um, the darkest, that would be the darkest area from the bright areas, because it's not shaded. But it's the the place, this part of helmet will be the furthest from the source of light. So it's, mm, it's clearly visible when we are painting uh, chrome. Because then the brightest part is the place where you are painting horizon. 
and the more the further to the top you go with your paints the darker it gets so it works in this way with everything that but uh, chrome is the most polished uh, thing that you can have so it it works almost like a mirror while other metallic elements don't but the same rules apply to them so they would be much darker on the top than they are on the sides edges of course it all depends on this how you are painting what's what's your goal it's i always just try to think where is the source of light that i'm uh, having for my miniature and it's, like i said it's above and in front then of course there's a problem with painting the back back of the miniature, so you, you've got to make some compromises there. It's unavoidable, but well, you can see only one side, that one side of the miniature when you look at it. It's, uh, it works better when you are painting dioramas, dioramas, because then you cannot move miniature, just make some, for example, some background, and then you can really uh, paint the back like it's in the bigger shadow so now I'm making two mixtures of yellow ochre and silver grey um, and they are ob obviously have one purpose they should be brighter than yellow ochre and I want to have one like the brightest reflection uh, the brightest mixture for the brightest reflections because they, I don't want them to stay silver grey, they need to be yellow. And yeah, this is the brightest mixture, as you can see. And yeah, I am I made them a bit darker than when I'm painting gold and MM, because I want this to look different than gold. Because then, when I will paint some miniature or some details on a miniature, like if this detail is supposed to look like gold, then, then then they will look different. And that's what I want. And as you can see now on these top reflections, the dark, the brightest color that I'm using is this mixture of yellow ochre and silver grey that is a bit darker. Uh, just like I said, because these reflections are not illuminated directly. Of course, keep in mind that I don't consider this um, Easterling Warrior as a, as my ma masterpiece. Uh, so I'm not going to spend some really big amount of time on really analyzing what would be the, mo the most realistic way uh, of approaching these reflections. Many of you will still tell me in the comment section that this is way too much time for painting uh, miniatures because you have armies to paint and yes of course you have armies to paint but uh, I'm just a painter that likes to paint so my approach is different and all what I, I am presenting here you can also make in a little bit quicker way if you will just skip a few parts like you can make smaller difference between the layers of course on this progressive uh, transition and you can spend less time on blendings or even not spend time on it at all and just create uh, these layers that I'm presenting here and I call it a sketch. Uh, but the knowledge you can get from this uh, tutorial is the knowledge that you can use on your heroes and maybe you would like to spend more time on painting heroes for your armies and then here you go there's a, there's a knowledge that you can knowledge that you can use there so yeah that's it so and and yeah that would be that would be basically it for today because like i said i wanted to, this tutorials to be 20 minutes long so we will stop here this is the sketch uh, I hope that everything was easy to understand here and the next tutorial will appear in, a, in two days. So see you then and thank you for your support. Bye.